What's up, 10 Scale Squad? Drift cars, 10 Scale drifting, some of my favorite things to do. And in this video, we are going to explore both types, country and western. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna look at the difference between a two-wheel drive <laughs> drift car and a four-wheel drive drift car. Now, now, every time we make a video that has a four-wheel drive drift car in it, people are always down in the comments saying that's not a real drift car, four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive, you can't drift a four-wheel drive. Shenanigans, I say. Have you ever heard of Ken Block? R.I.P. He drifts four-wheel drive, all-wheel drive stuff all the time through the dirt on asphalt. It's definitely a thing. I do it in the BMW all the time. <laughs> all the time. On Closed road courses, of course. But anyway, we're going to explore <laughs> how they're similar, how they're different, and where you would use one over the other, mm -hmm. how they drive, the characteristics of them, and why we absolutely love these things. So we got out two of my favorite drift cars in four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive flavor, and uh, let's break them down and kind of talk about them. First, let's start with this thing. This is my Red Cat Thunder Drift, and this is a belt-driven, four-wheel drive, tangly mess of wires drift car. Now, there is a few important things to note on here. While you certainly can get like a normal, traditional, let's call it, uh, shaft-driven 10-skill touring car, this one is set up for drifting because notice how the motor runs parallel with the wheels. So the motor turns the actual same direction as the wheels. And that kind of eliminates motor torque twist throughout the chassis. Uh, and it uses belts as opposed to a drive shaft. Why is that better? I don't know, because you don't have a spinning solid drive shaft that's torquing <laughs> on your diffs. Uh, notice how big the diffs are in this thing. It has these big beefy doodles um, and the I did modify this one and I locked the rear yep. differential as you should do in your drift car. But for drifting, I absolutely prefer belt driven uh, belt driven chassis just because they drive so smooth. Oh, other modifications that I've done to this, it has a brushless setup in it. I changed the radio system, swapped out the regular body post for these cheapo magnetic ones this we've actually had this car a long time it's been through a lot it's been through <laughs> for a, a long lot. time <laughs> and we, we smashed these things oh yeah we drove them so hard and you can see this thing is all battle scarred up because we just took it out to random parking lots uh and anywhere that we could find like you said that was smooth and open and had some cool stuff to drift around we were out there doing it and that is one of the main reasons that we really like four-wheel drive drift cars is because you don't need really you don't really need a prepped surface you just need a flat parking mm -hmm. lot or a smooth ish parking lot but it doesn't matter if it is asphalt or anything like that you can take this thing out and slide it sideways mm -hmm. no problem at all you can also throw, there were lots of times when we would throw rubber tires on this thing and go and do speed oh, runs. Out the, and, go out and do speed ones or take them out in the rain Yeah, with the rubbers. And it was just like having <laughs> these back out here and it was on the concrete. It was yeah, kind of wild. It was so much fun. You <clears> don't <throat> need a like prepped concrete surface to run these things. You can honestly take them out and, you know, just about just about anywhere you can have an absolute blast mm -hmm. with them we run them on the road uh, all, all over and it's not a, to and not to jump too far into this one or anything either but when we did visit the drift uh drift track down in florida um they had to inspect our tires yeah um they needed to make sure they were good for the surface because i mean the amount of time and stuff spent on that surface and how smooth it needs to be for what those guys do you do not need that with these. And yeah. that's kind of what we, that is the number one goal with these is no, you can use it anywhere with a flat surface, like he said. Yeah. It's when, just, when, when we started, we didn't have the, we didn't we have didn't the have shop here place. where we yeah, could go and, and, and slide. 
So this was pretty much the best option for us. This is another Red Cat. This is my Red Cat FRS. <laughs> It is definitely not without its flaws. However, for a beginner two-wheel drive drifter, it's one of the options. It might not be the best option. <laughs> yeah. Affordable. It's very within reach. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend a crazy amount of money to get into a pretty legit, certainly capable, especially if you upgrade it, uh, chassis. We've got some huge headlines here. Obviously, it has the carbon fiber decks, which is a huge selling point for this car. Mm -hmm. uh, it comes with a brushless system right out of the box. It comes with a pretty legit, not the best, but okay uh, uh, gyro in it, which you absolutely need for two-wheel drive that you yes. don't need for four-wheel drive. Uh, the servo in it is not great. It could definitely be faster. The radio system in it kind of sucks. And it does require quite a bit of adjustment out of the box to get it sliding reliably mm -hmm. and predictably but rather than beef this thing up and address all of its flaws we just put this super expensive <laughs> body on it with this also super expensive very finicky but looks really cool rocket bunny wide body kit on it with some wheels and tires and now it absolutely looks the part this one has some similarities notice that the motor again is going is turning the same direction as the wheels uh, this one is just gear driven. Um, so similar to like, similar to like what you would find in a, believe it or not, like two wheel drive, like stadium truck. Yes. There's no belts or anything here. It's all gears. We just have a, uh, a pinion, a spur, and that feeds a transmission that actually spins the wheels. So, uh, kind of different from a normal two wheel drive drift car that would have like a small belt going to just the rear wheels. They probably do that just to save money, I would assume. Make it more reliable, I guess. So obviously how this one differs, it there is no drive to the front wheels, which means you can have insane <laughs> steering angle. Oh, yeah. Absolutely insane steering angle, just like you would have on a normal drift car. Compare that, if you will, to, yeah, compare that to this you have nowhere near as much steering angle. And we've actually modified this a little bit to get a little bit more out of it. Uh, but yeah, nowhere near as much. And under, I mean, under real drifting performance applications, yes, I'm sure there's, there's more tunability for more angle out of an all wheel drive car. But for the RC, you don't get much. Yeah. Everything's in the way. Because you have drive shafts, mm -hmm. right? You have, you have a, a front diff, you have drive shafts, and the and the dog bone goes into a drive cup on the wheel or on the hub and you know you're only going to get so, so much, much angle before, before that, that starts to bind to, yep whereas this you can spin those things as far as you want yeah so that being said you do for sure absolutely have to have a gyro to help counter steer for you when you have a rear wheel drive drift car. Have you ever driven a rear wheel drive drift car without a gyro? It's, it's just a spin fest. Yeah, it's, it's, it's every tough. now and then you can get a good, like maybe a good sweeper out of it, but it to, to try and do any kind of transition or mm -hmm. it, it just, it's yeah. like driving on an icy road in the middle of Michigan. You absolutely have to have it. Not so mm -hmm. in all wheel drive. You can drive that thing sideways and it handles just like a normal touring car going sideways. It responds to steering input much slower, but also much more predictable. So that's enough talking about them. Let's get them out and actually look at them sliding sideways and see if we can, you know, kind of break down how these things drive and what might be right or wrong for you. So if you're new to drifting, one of the first things that you learn to do is donuts and we've got a spot set up right here in the shop on the concrete 
that is perfect for doing and learning donuts. Now watch how the all wheel drive car kind of moves around the circle. Notice how the whole car slides and not just the rear. It doesn't necessarily rotate around the center point. The whole car kind of slides around it. Now notice how the two wheel drive, the FRS, FDS, whatever it's called. Notice how the front of the car kind of stays, kind of just points at the center point of whatever you're drifting around. And the rear of the car kind of rotates around. Makes sense, right? Now also, when I was just doing those donuts around there, believe it or not, I was actually not really holding on to the steering wheel at all. Most of that was, it was all self-steering. That's the gyro kicking in, catching the front wheels and counter steering for you. And you can absolutely really notice those front wheels counter steering much, much more than they were in the all wheel drive or four wheel drive drift car. That's no steering input at all, none. Look, none at all. Nice. Ooh. We were trying to spay it over for that shot, but it didn't quite work. They not bad at all. Right on. Yeah, there we go. Well, you made there it look. Oh, there we go, there we go. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, man, you can really Dude, put a you, lot. yeah, you made that look, look way easier than I did. You can get it pretty tight and have a lot of angle with two wheel drive. There you go. See how low I'm touching the steering? Ah, and this is a terrible transmitter. Oh, it's too. awful, this yeah. It's a terrible transmitter. And still I can get it to like self-steer and kind of do its own mm -hmm. thing with very little input. So with a really nice radio system, like you can dial this thing in and get it to perform really well. So if you're a tinkerer, <laughs> there's all kinds of things to fiddle around with on this. I'm not smart enough to do that though. I just like to, yeah. Know, I just like to make something that looks cool. Open it up and do stuff I'm with like it. Pretend I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So now we're going to drive both of them together. We're just gonna try and, just simple stuff here. We're just gonna try and drift around uh, this little spot right here. And that might be able to let you see both the speed at which, the angle with which, and uh, the attitude at which they both kind of drift. Ethan's gonna drive the Evo. I'm gonna drive the Subaru. Well, as always, it kind of turns into a little bit of a bumper car demolition derby, but that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad. We've never, I don't think we've actually ever tried two wheel and four wheel at the same time. But you can definitely see that I had way more angle and Ethan was hanging it out further away and had a lot more speed. So, what do you think? Four wheel drive or two wheel drive? Four wheel drive is definitely a little bit more affordable, definitely more approachable, and you can just pull it out of the box, do it in your driveway, do it in your garage, do it on your street, 
anywhere you want. Mm -hmm. Two wheel drive, you really gotta be, you really gotta get a little bit of skill to get it right. Um, and again, we don't know what we're doing. And we've got lots and lots of hours behind trying to figure these things out and we're still not great. Uh, <laughs> to end, end with a lot of guys behind us yelling at us, telling us to no, no, <laughs> yes. losers. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> you know what my favorite thing about these cars is? These are ours, like we built these. There is not another, oh, no, there is no. not another RDS or whatever this is called. There's not another one like it in the world. There no. just isn't. There is certainly not another Thunder Drift like this anywhere uh they're absolutely one of a kind like mm -hmm. we put we put a lot Facts. of work into both of these and they're ours so even if we suck at driving them uh, uh oh there we go there that's we the go. big party mode right there yeah Dude, that's JDM as hell. That, that is definitely the 100%. What do you mean, officer? Right? <laughs> but anyway, that's just our opinion. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Did this answer any questions you might have had? Does that kind of help you decide on what might be right for you? Or are you like, well, now I just got to have both. And if you are buying both, what are you, what are you doing? Are you MST, Red Cat? Are you going Secura? Big build? Budget build? Let me know down below and if this is your first time checking out the channel welcome i'm glad you found it we do all kinds of drifting <laughs> not saying that we're good no. but we do all kinds of it so there will be a playlist somewhere around here and we like to do this kind of shenanigans all the time and we've got some wicked stuff coming up you're gonna want to stick around all right guys until next time I don't know what we're chopping out here. Probably Chop that belt. Yeah, honestly. probably. Yeah, she's Jeez, looking a little looking grim. A little